Hi there, Jamie Keith here tonight at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great night tonight. Tonight we're going to talk a little Trello. So if you haven't used Trello before, it's a great uh, app to collaborate, to keep everything organized in your life. So this video tonight is going to show you five different ways uh, teachers could use Trello inside their classroom, but it's a little different. As I started researching ways to do this, I started talking with Scott Friesen from Simpletivity. He has a YouTube channel. It's connected right off of my page. And we started Started communicating here's his page and uh, I asked him for some help on this and so it worked out that he actually created the video for me that I'm going to show you tonight and he has five great reasons that I you know what truthfully I didn't think of it all so go ahead and check out his channel uh, I think you're gonna find lots of great tips there and if you have any other ideas how you could use Trello in your classroom just write it in the comments down below uh, on it and then I'll uh, link I'll put the different tips in the description down below and link it and timestamp it so you can and jump around too. Anyway, let's get started on this great video. And uh, this week, I have Scott Friesen uh, presenting five tips for teachers in Trello. Hello, everyone. Scott Friesen here from Simpletivity. And I want to thank Jamie for having me today on the Teachers Tech channel. You know, I've been a longtime fan of Teachers Tech and really appreciate how Jamie shows us new tips and new techniques for getting the most out of our online applications. Well, as an educator myself, as someone who helps people to be more productive and more efficient with their time, I want to share with you one of my favorite productivity tools, and that is Trello. Trello is an extremely flexible application which allows you to organize and manage almost anything. But today, I want to show you how to use Trello in the classroom. I want to show you five different ways how you can get the most out of Trello if you are in fact a teacher or educate others. So let's get started with lesson planning. Here we see a board which has been set up specifically for planning out a curriculum or planning out individual teaching components. Now Trello is made up of both lists which you see here as the vertical weeks and cards which you see here as the little white rectangles which usually represent just a short title or a perhaps an image attached to it to help us identify what that card represents. So the lists in this example represent the different weeks and here I can see my next four weeks out and then within those weeks I can have my individual lessons. Now the great thing about Trello is that you can drag and drop almost anything. If I want to reorder the way in which I'm going to teach this particular component, I can do so. And if I want to swap it out for different weeks, I can do that as well and just drag things into different lists. But one of my favorite features of Trello is that it keeps my high-level view here nice and clean. I can get a nice perspective of my lesson plan, but then I can click on an individual card and get all of the details. I can add complex notes, I can add attachments or links to, to different websites. I can have it all here contained within the card. So as I go to teach this subject, I can have all of my reference information available to me. Yet when I close the card, I come back and get this nice high level view. You can also see from this board example that Trello is a very visual application. Here you can see I have a preview of the quiz that I'm going to give that day and I can also add different colored labels if I want them to represent different things here on different cards. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, we are looking at a class project, and I'm looking at the status of where they are within this project. So here you can see this board has six different steps, all listed across the top. And in this case, we have the cards are represented by the individual students. So each student has their own individual card. So as an instructor or as a teacher, I can see exactly where someone is within this six-step process. At a glance, I can see that the majority of my students are working on step number four. And as Emily completes step number four and moves to step number five, I can simply drag and drop her name over here. 
So this can be a great way for classroom management to see where someone is within a particular process, where they are as they travel along the, uh, the assignment spectrum or along the multiple steps within a particular assignment. And of course, I could always click on one of these student names and add even further descriptions or further details if I so desired. Let's take a look at example number three. Now, in this case, we're looking at actually giving uh, control or access to your students, or if you like, you could just use this as a reference material. In this case, I've set up a group rotation board. So here you see I have different areas of the classroom or maybe different themes in which I want small groups of students to transition to on a regular basis. So I can have the name of that particular uh, group or rotation area. I can have images and links directly to perhaps the video that I want them to watch in that space and the instructions for what I want them to do when they are working together in that area. And then at the bottom of that particular list, I have have the group itself. So here you can see the students have been grouped into groups of three. When it's time to rotate, it's as simple as just dragging that card over and dragging them into the next group. And perhaps I don't always rotate them in a linear fashion, so perhaps I want this group, Anthony, Jill, and Ellie, I want them to come back to the timeline review. So very easy to manage your groups in a rotation type of format. And again, you could use this as reference for yourself or perhaps you would give access to your students so that they can reference the instructions or the questions given to them and they can know exactly where they are in the rotation. Now, the fourth example I want to share with you today has to do with a student group project. And in this case, we would be creating a Trello board for your students to actually use. So as an instructor, you can set up uh, many components of this card yourself. For example, the first one is just the project overview. So here you can provide the detailed description of what they are going to accomplish. And again, you can add images and other reference material if you like. In the second list, we have the brainstorm area, and this is where we have our first deadline. Each and every card within Trello can be added a due date, so you can put milestones, you can put other due dates attached to each and every card, and we see that with the first card in each of these lists, from the project overview all the way to the final draft. We also have a list of the students that are a part of this group. So these are the four students which are going to make up this group and they're going to work together on this research project. And here are the different phases of this particular assignment. Again, there is no limit on how many cards you can have in a particular list. So in this research list, I've also included past projects from other students that they can reference or that they can look to for inspiration as they complete their project. And in the rough draft area, you can even upload documents directly to Trello or if you use a service such as Google Drive, you can link those documents directly to a Trello card. Again, helping both your students and yourself to keep things very centralized in a nice, clean-looking layout such as we see here within Trello. Now, the fifth and final way that I want to show you how to use Trello might be the most powerful or perhaps the most helpful to you, your students, and especially their parents. I know as a parent myself, it can often be challenging to keep up with all of the emails and the paper forms from my multiple kids at multiple schools as to what is going on. But Trello can be a great way to create a class newsletter. So in this example, you will see the lists represent the different weeks and what has been going on and what is uh, coming up. So down below, we have a, a nice image on the first card to give it a bit more of a visual appeal. But now we also have further due dates as to what is going on that week, what is happening. 
And if I click on the after school meeting, for example, your parents or whoever you give access to this board can see further details about that particular meeting. So this can be a great way to encourage parents and also students to reference this information on their own. Of course, you could email a link to this Trello board directly if you like, if you'd like to do that on a weekly basis. But you can also just give them the link so they can come back and reference this as you update the information that is listed here. So a class newsletter, a great way to not only see what is coming up, but you can also keep a record. Here you can see uh, the previous weeks here to the right, how the previous class newsletters have looked like and what they have done before. And let's say that you don't get to something maybe, maybe you didn't get to this dinner table discussion. It's as easy as dragging it over to this list over here and now it's a part, it still remains as a part of the class newsletter, but people will be reviewing it here in the most recent week. So I hope you enjoyed that brief tour of Trello and how you can use Trello within the classroom. Again, I want to thank Jamie for having me here on Teachers Tech and I would encourage you to subscribe right here to Teachers Tech for more tips and tricks. And if you want to look for more ways to be more productive and to learn about the best productivity tools, I would encourage you to subscribe to the Simple Tivity channel. Thanks again to Jamie and remember Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.